A story came out the other day, uh, leaked to the Washington Post, that in fact the Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney in Washington are conducting a criminal investigation, which includes former President Trump. Let's take a look from the top now at how uh, this was handled on the Morning Schmo Show on MSNBC. Go. I want to begin with the latest in the Justice Department investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Four people familiar with the matter telling the Washington Post federal prosecutors now have turned their attention to former President Donald Trump. Two sources telling the Post in recent days, two top aides to former Vice President Mike Pence. OK, by the way, these sources are leaks from the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Department of Justice. It's that simple. And it's a crime to be leaking about things going on in a grand jury or the fact of a criminal investigation. So crimes are being committed in the name of protecting the Constitution. Go ahead. Asked before a grand jury about their conversations with Trump, his lawyers, and others in his inner circle who took part in the scheme to replace certified Biden electors with a slate of the former president's it's allies. Not a scheme to replace Biden electors. It is a second pool of electors. Congress makes the final decision. All Congress has to do is say no. We're not going to count them. It can't be a scheme to overthrow or overturn the election results since the results have not been formalized. I'm not dancing on the head of a pin. I'm telling you how the way it's supposed to work. Go ahead. According to the Post, prosecutors have asked hours of detailed questions about meetings Trump led in December 2020 and January 2021, his pressure campaign on Pence to overturn the election, and what instructions Trump gave his lawyers and advisors about fake electors and sending electors back. It's going to be a pressure campaign to overturn the election. What does that mean? What does that mean exactly? To not accept the electors that have been sent? There's no pressure campaign to overturn the election. Pence makes a decision about whether to accept them or not. People say he didn't even have that kind of authority. Well, you're going to charge the former president of the United States if you can't even tell us what authorities Pence had or didn't have? Maybe if Pence had absolutely no authority to do anything other than count them, and that's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution is silent on it. That's not even what the federal law says that was passed in the 1880s. You're going to charge Donald Trump with trying to interfere with the results of the election? There are no actual formal results of the election over again. Otherwise, why send the list of electors from every state to Congress? Congress has to accept them or not accept them. That's how presidents are actually chosen. Go back to the states. Two sources also telling the paper the Justice Department has had it in its possession since April, the phone records of key officials and aides in the Trump administration, including former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. The investigation, the Post reports, is now on two tracks, one centered on the charges already filed against those who stormed the Capitol, like seditious conspiracy, and the other track, potential fraud connected to the elector scheme and the pressure Trump put on DOJ officials and others to go along with the big lie. A spokesman for the former president did not immediately respond to the Post request for comment. A Justice Department spokesman and a lawyer for Mark Meadows also both declined to comment. NBC News has not yet been able to independently confirm the new details in the Post reporting. But Attorney General Garland did sit down for that interview with Lester Holt and had an exchange on whether the Justice Department would indict the former president if the evidence supported now, it. Now, let's stop. Just the fact that the media keeps asking, keeps pressing. It's a pressure campaign. You talk about pressure to bring charges against Trump. The Democrat Party and the media are insisting on it the way they insisted on impeachment. Go ahead. You said in no uncertain terms the other day that no one is above the law. Yeah. That said, um, the indictment of a former president, of a perhaps candidate for president, would arguably tear the country apart. Is that your concern as you make your decision down the road here? Do you have to think about things like that? Look, we pursue justice without fear or favor. We intend to no, hold. No, you don't. You're a liar. Without fear or favor? 
people are still protesting against justices, you know, in, in the front of their homes, keeping their kids away, keeping the neighborhood awake. You don't pursue it without fear or bias. Same with the Colbert Nine. You didn't want to be trashed by Hollywood or comedians. You didn't pursue them. So what the hell are you talking about? Go ahead. Everyone, anyone who was criminally responsible for the events surrounding January 6th, for any attempt to interfere with the lawful transfer of power from one administration to another, accountable. That's what we do. We don't pay any attention to other uh, issues with respect to that. So if Donald Trump were to become a candidate for president again, that would not change your schedule or, or how now you... Now, his answer to that should have been, I'm not commenting any further, but that's not what he says. Go ahead. Move forward or don't move forward? Uh, I'll say again that uh, we will hold accountable anyone who was criminally responsible for attempting to interfere with the transfer, legitimate lawful transfer of power from one administration to the next. No, you won't. The hell do you think the whole Russia collusion BS was about? What do you think the, the, uh, the, the use of the senior level of the FBI and the FISA court was all about? What do you think the, uh, the, the effort by Jim Comey to visit with Trump at Trump Tower and basically threaten him with a phony document was all about? And we can go on and on and on, folks. Wasn't that about interfering with the civil and lawful transfer of power? Of course it was. And the ongoing coup against Donald Trump, one effort after another after another, they didn't criminalize any of that. I mean, we do have a special counsel who's still running around, but it's not the full power of the Department of Justice, is it? No. So anybody interfering with the transfer of power from one administration to the other, if you were involved in the lawful process permitted by the Constitution, whether they like it or not, or the media like it or not, or anybody likes it or not, that is not obstruction, and it is not a crime, and it's not conspiracy to interfere with anything. For the third time during this program, let me underscore the point. Not until the electors are voted on and accepted by the Congress of the United States on the designated date, January 6th, is the election over are the president and the vice president chosen. That's why Democrats in 2000, in 2004, and 2016 objected to the counting of certain electors because they wanted to overturn uh, the counting of those electors from those states and change the outcome of the election because the election wasn't over. It's not over till it's over. Go ahead. We know that the Justice Department is now squarely focused on Trump, along with his top allies who were involved with some of these plans, including, as I, I, I did not mention previously, but this fake slate of electors plan. It's not a fake slate of electors. The language means something. It was an alternative slate of electors because there were objections raised about some of the voting techniques, some of the voting outcomes, some of the decisions in the states by entities that weren't supposed to be making decisions. I have no idea what actually took place, but I can see just by looking back that they were saying, okay, let's put an alternative slate of electors up and let Congress decide. It doesn't mean they're fake, it just means Congress can accept them or reject them. Go ahead. In particular, we also know that these people uh, have been asked before the grand jury about those plans as well and their conversations with Trump campaign officials. Um, but there has you been... You see, the way this is being portrayed and positioned is, if you tried to affect who the electors were by talking to state legislators and trying to influence state legislatures, if you try to influence and suggest the appointment of a second slate of electors, uh, if you gave advice to that effect, if you took steps to that effect, if you spoke to somebody to that effect, you were obstructing the official count of the United States Congress. No, you're not. No, you're not. 
Go ahead. Increasing pressure on Merrick Garland, especially after this eighth hearing held by the January 6th committee uh, that really laid out how responsible and, and directly involved the former president was in most of these conversations and the decision making with regards to the insurrection to go hard. See the language, the insurrection. There was no insurrection. I've explained it here many, many times. I've explained it on Fox many times. I've explained it on radio many times. It doesn't matter. Washington Post, New York Times, MSNBC, CNN, it's the big lie. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Was he involved in the insurrection? Was he involved in the fake electors? Just look at the language that they use. And they use it for a purpose. Go ahead on the former president uh, and, and, and now we're seeing Merrick Garland who has taken this bottom up approach uh, for the past year and a half now finally uh, move his way up to well, he's finally moving oh my gosh says this Washington Post report. finally it's not bottom up it's top down this is what Andrew Weissman has been pushing he's the little hip man that has done so much damage to so many people and so many businesses he was the guy basically running the Mueller special investigation. He didn't win out. He wanted to do some horrific things. He didn't, he didn't get to do those things because calmer heads, more rational people prevailed. But she's talking just like him because he wrote an op-ed saying, we shouldn't be doing the bottom up. We should be doing the top down. And what does she say? Finally, we're doing the top down. What a bunch of corrupt disgusting ideologues in the media. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.